Being the third son of a good family and not educated to any trade, my head began to be filled early with thoughts of leaving England to see the world. And thus, against the will, nay, the commands of my father, I broke loose and went to sea. How true my father's prophecy of disaster. For not long after, being in the latitude of 12 degrees 18 minutes, bound for Africa to buy Negro slaves for my fellow planters in the Brazils, a violent tornado came upon us, which carried us westward, far out of the way of all human commerce. My only possession, my only weapon. I woke refreshed, yet half perished with hunger. Thirsty, 
Without provisions, with little hope of survival, I set out to survey my fate. No other land in sight. I was on an island, environed by the sea. Our ship, stranded during the night. I'd slip from the rock. I must contrive a raft and try to save her precious supplies. I plundered from the wreck. Many chests with all manner of clothes, tallow, rum, gunpowder, the carpenter's tools, and scores of other most useful articles. Not to forget that fellow survivor, Sam. Gold. 
much use to me. However, on second thoughts, to me than all the gold in the world. How often I'd seen my servants do this, yet I, a master to servants, couldn't even build my own fire. What is it? She was gone. That fearful sound had been the death cry of our poor ship. I regretted all ironwork, cables and lead that had gone down with her. Rats. The only things from the ship I did not want ashore. sail by without my knowledge. I kept dry branches ready to flame into a mighty beacon. My days were hurried, crowded with all manner of urgent tasks. The most urgent of all was to secure myself against both wild beasts and savages. Meanwhile, the rains approached, and needing a storeroom for all my supplies, I found a place where the earth was easiest and started to dig a cave. As I had never before so much as handled an axe, or for that matter, any other kind of tool, I was but a very sorry workman, and all this cost me a great deal of time. a good shot, and with good cause, for my constant, hard, manual labor gave me a most voracious appetite. The green coconut and its milk I found to be most wholesome, cool, and refreshing. My 
eleventh month. Days passed in hunting wildfowl, preparing food, trips to my lookout hill to search for sight of ships. One day, much like another, uneventful and... I'm sick. Chills. Fever getting worse. of life, my boy, the middle station. Even kings would have envied you. Admit that now, admit it. Will you not help me? I want water. Why did you fling yourself into this stupid adventure? Did you not know that your mother and I were praying that God would not separate us from you? You were always wayward. Water! Bring me water! Your mother and I will forgive you. But remember, God will not forgive you. I awoke weak, yet clear of head. Whether I had slept for one whole day or more, I could never be certain. But my first thought was for water.
Did not the Brazilians have some physic to prevent recurrence of fevers? Of course, tobacco mixed in rum. In that chest, I found a cure for both body and soul. Come to me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Yes, it's true. Only he can deliver me from this place. I now respect the Sabbath, and so mark that day differently from all others. The last of it, Rex. Now I have to be denied it. Staff of life. I recalled a grass I had observed to sprout and start to grow. Grain. That which in England we call corn and in the new world they call wheat. Some few seeds must have come ashore with me from the ship. With the Lord's help, I could try to raise a crop. Meanwhile, I set out to make a more perfect discovery of my domain. I found great amounts of cocoa, orange and lemon trees, sugar cane, tobacco and banana. I discover the turtle, which furnishes an abundance of savory flesh, great quantities of most useful shell. And even turtle eggs. Also that other sea beast, the octopus, which they say some peoples have the fortitude to eat. Parrots, which were known to me. and other birds which were foreign. Animals I did not recognize. And those I did, goats. It was a most unusually clear day. Land! Could I not hack out a canoe, sail to it? A huge 
rowed out a tiny sailing canoe or swept out to sea by some great current. Thanks only to a sudden gale of wind was I even fortunate enough to get back on shore. In other ventures, I was more successful. Tell me only this. Where did you find their father? Do you know? The one mystery of the island I never solved. Due to sowing during dry season, first half of seed complete loss. Second half now in ground. Hope for best. Yet, just as it seemed the best would come to pass, and I might finally triumph over the sun, the rain, I was threatened by a new enemy. The birds. They came down on my field like a plague, a ruthless, devouring army. I fought for the wheat as though it were my life, used every weapon to frighten and kill. Hungry Rex. You can wag your tail, but you cannot talk to me. Five years. Fifth anniversary of the day I landed. Time to celebrate. My friends, my old friends. Stop! 
Last, a full harvest. Now it could be truly said, I worked for my bread. I built a bar, so that I fancied now I was lord of the whole manor and had my country house and my seacoast house too. I perfected myself in old tasks and was forced to learn new ones. In short, I learned to master everything in my island except myself. For sometimes in the midst of my work, the anguish of my soul and my loneliness would break out upon me like a storm. No matter the dangers, I must do something to escape this tomb. This prison. My heart died within me. Alone. Alone. Forever alone. I was a prisoner, locked up by the eternal bars and bolts of the ocean. I quite gave up looking to sea for ships. In time, my linen clothes rotted, my cats all ran wild. My faithful dog, weakened by age, could no longer keep up with the hunt he so dearly loved. Rex! Rex! What's wrong? Rex!
Eat, Rex. Eat. Poor Rex. Poor boy. Would you like a tasty? A dove? A pigeon's egg, huh? Now you just wait there for me. Now truly alone, starved for the sound of another voice, any voice, I would rush to my valley of the echo. My shepherd is my shepherd is my shepherd I shall not want I shall not want I shall not want He maketh me he to lie down in green pastures He leadeth me beside still waters He restoreth my soul. my soul, my soul, my soul. Dreadful fancies possessed my mind. I fought to save my sanity. Lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. continents a green scum and myself of no purpose of no meaning <laughs> Anyone in England met such an odd creature as I was in my 18th year of solitude, 
It must either have frightened them or caused a great deal of laughter. <laughs> ah, my little friends. <laughs> yes. I don't know what to call you, but you are my little friends, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> And I'll just you wait there in your homes, and I'll feed you. <laughs> You're hungry too, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Here's a morsel for you. Eh? Yeah. There. Ha! Go on. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> there. Goodbye. years of loneliness, now trembling in the very apprehension of seeing another human. How mad men are possessed by fear. I even scattered my tame cattle so they would not betray my presence. Eaters. From that very land I had once thought to sail to. Revolted. Horrified. All that night I observed the cannibals at their ghastly entertainment. How soon a tide would bring them back? How many times have they come and gone while I, unknowing, was on my side of the island? in a murdering humor. 
I even thought to lure them to my castle, and from ambush slaughter, 20 or 30 of the naked wretches. I knew no peace for months and months. A hundred times I was just about to let fly at them in my sleep. I contrived what I called my bomb. might be destroyed. After passion, hatred, I realized I had no heaven-sent right to be judge and executioner on these people who had done me no injury. I would leave them to God's justice. I would not interfere with them unless they attack me first. I moved about my island with the greatest of caution, never knowing when their attack might come. two victims. While they strung one up for slaughter, I saw that the second tried to make his escape. Up, up, up now. Up, up, I 
shall not harm you. Dina! 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 Uno, uno! Aruba! Aruba! Wednesday, Thursday. Man, wrong, wrong. Friday, this good. Eat. <coughs> I dare not sleep. If the cannibals fail to come at me before morning, he might. The cannibals had departed, fortunately for me, without so much as a search for their missing companions.
I would not let him handle any weapon. I use my musket to ensure his continued fear and respect of me. Kama! Kama! Prizatli! Prizatli! I put a strong door to my cave, so he could not take me unawares at night. How reassuring it was to see him eat the flesh of animals, knowing that the only source for that other meat he so relished would be myself. Someday, if you're good, I'll teach you to smoke. How pleasant it was, once more to have a servant. Friday. What's this? Milk. And this? Bread. No, no, Friday. Use a fork. Friday. What's this? Plate. This Friday. Meat. Good Friday. Very good. See. Inside, black line. It is your land, your nation. Inside, no. There. But with this, it appears near. There is your nation, your people. Oh, happy. There's in my nation, my people. Why do you always come hither, to this island? God says, only good place after kill here. And you would like to go back to your nation? Yes, oh yes, like go back Friday. Friday happy there see my people. I understand. Suppose a horde of his countrymen were to visit the island. Would he not, forgetting all obligation to me, either return with them to his native country, or worse still, lead them to plunder my precious possessions and even join in the feast upon myself. Here, Friday, what do you want? Smoke, good for master, good for Friday. Go. If you want something again, ask me first.
said he truly remembered my promise that he might smoke. No. I could not trust him through another night. You can go to bed now. Not finished work. You hear me? Go to bed! So long ago, I had intended these for slaves. Sit up. Give me your ankles. Your legs. Why you die, Friday? I'm your master. I shall do as pleases me. You force me to this. Now at least I can sleep. <laughs> Take off quickly, by the foot skirt. You have decided. Did you not tell me the other day you want to go away? Go back to your own nation? That you want to go back to your people? Yes. Go with you. Only with you. They kill me. I tell you, say life. You friend. They'd still kill me. No, no, kill. My people obey Friday. Friday, love master, always. I cannot hold you here by force. Perhaps it will be better if you go back. You take. Kill, Friday. What must I kill you for? Take. Kill, Friday. No save Friday away. to be my friend. I will never leave here. But if you want to go, do so. Tilly, take a deep. I had been. Friday was as loyal a friend as ever man could want. With his many different skills, he enriched my life in the island. We found that two working together could do far more than two working separately.
right, eh? You like? You know what it is? Beautiful. Beautiful present from God. Better say from the devil. Hmm? No, no, you would not understand, Friday. Will Master give Friday? One, two, three. You take them all, amuse yourself. If you get tired of them, throw them into the sea. Beautiful call for wood! Take that off. These were the happiest years of all the life I led in my island. <laughs> Sit down, Friday. Understand, Friday? The devil is God's enemy in the hearts of men. He uses all his, his malice and skill to destroy the kingdom of Christ. <laughs> but Master say, God is so strong, so great. Is he not much more strong as the devil? Yes, yes, Friday. God is stronger than the devil. He is above the devil. Therefore, we pray to God. But if God is much more strong as the devil, why God no kill devil, so make him no more wicked. What say, Friday? What say? Is God the most strong? Why he not kill devil, kill sin? Well, you see, Friday, without the devil there'll be no temptation and no sin. So the devil must be there for us to have a, a chance to choose sin or resist it. Is God let devil tempt us? Uh, yes. Then why God mad when we sin? Ha! <laughs> you understand, don't you, Paul? Friday can't get these things into his head. You understand, don't you? Eh? <laughs> Twenty-eight years on the island. The desire to escape still burned within me. And now, counting on Friday's skill and knowledge, I contemplated the manufacture of a craft large enough to carry us to the Spanish country, which Friday told me lay to the north. We devoted weeks to selecting a proper tree. This would be my last chance to see my native England before I died. Where'd he 
get out of sight. There must be others. Shh. Look. Ah, come on. <laughs> now, rehearsal for the last time. Now, there they are. Here we are behind the trees. Now, we'll see. White men, like Master French. Come on! Move now! Fernandez, I am to those trees. We'll come back for you. We'll have got water for the ship. White men eat prisoners, too? Eat them? No Friday. But murder them? Yes. Move now!
Master Sirop. <laughs> in spite of my appearance, I'm not something that lives in trees. <laughs> I'm a man. Captain Oberto. Now we can talk. But to whom do I speak? Who are you? Where have you come from? Uh, what is your case? Tell me. Mutiny, sir. Engineered by my mate. Aided by those you saw him lead ashore. My boatswain here and most of those aboard are loyal. It's the mutineers who control the firearms, sir. And your ship? As fine as ever bore sail. Beyond the reef, waiting only for the next tide. They anchored here to take on water and abandon us when they surprised and killed the savages. Should they return to the ship, we are lost. If we prevent their return, think you it possible armed, of course, to reassert your command? Nothing could prevent me. On two conditions, then. Agreed. First, while you're upon this island, you will be governed by my orders. Accept it. Second, if we recover your ship, you will carry me and my man to England, passage free. Were your home in China, India, three times around the world. <coughs> <laughs> Mate? Yes. Leader of the mutiny. Fernandez! They're going to escape. Unless I've forgotten the ways of civilization, Captain. They'll not be putting back yet. Which way? In 
the name of the governor of this island, drop arms! Drop arms or I'd blow your head off. Was I that young? Master, the boat arrived. The captain is waiting. Thank you, Friday. Uh, I didn't expect it yet. The proof of the pudding. So the people cannot say the truth was mad. Here's a present for our friends outside. Captain to punish us harshly for our sins, did you not, Governor? Nothing of the sort. I asked the Captain to grant your request to remain here rather than return to the gallows. You started ill, and you'll live to regret your sacrilegious waste. But I have here instructions for you. Time of planting, care of livestock, places of concealment of weapons and powder, Information also as to the savages who do on occasion visit this place. Whether or not you learn the lessons I have learned and survive, I cannot foresee. But you have something which I for years did not have. Something for which, for which I wept, for which my soul shriveled and starved. You have others of your own kind. You have companions. Man. You can sever the ropes that bind you. It should cost you an hour of painful work. By then, we shall have set sail. What you saw today, Friday, are you not a little afraid of coming back with me to civilization? His master is not. Friday is not. Two months and 19 days.